Most modern diesel locomotives aren't technically diesel driven. Instead, the wheels are driven by electric motors that are powered by electricity generated by the locomotive's engine, essentially making most modern diesels glorified generators on wheels. But powerful nonetheless. A Canadian national M420 can generate over 2,000 horsepower from its engine, so in terms of energy output, they're essentially mini power stations on rails. So if most diesel locomotives are just big generators on wheels, that raises the question, how much power can they generate? It can vary from engine to engine, but I don't think anyone is too sure as it's never really been tested. What I can tell you is they can generate roughly enough electricity to power a small neighborhood. How do I know this? Because that's exactly what happened to Canadian National Locomotive number 3502 in January of 1998. It was the height of winter in Butcherville, Quebec. A harsh ice storm had just rolled in and swept across the town, followed by another one, and then another one. The ice built up and eventually caused the power grid to fail, leaving thousands of people without power and, more importantly, heating. The mayor at the time needed a way to provide power to emergency services and emergency heated shelters. They didn't have anything to hand that could generate enough electricity when suddenly she had a brainwave. Why not use trains to power the town? I know that sounds like a crazy idea, but it wasn't out of the question. For many years before diesel power, steam locomotives have been used as sources of heat and power in emergency situations. The boiler could be used to produce large quantities of heated water and fuel from the tenders could be used for smaller fires. It's not unheard of for some engines to be taken off the rails and become repurposed as a stationary boiler. So when you think that a town needs electricity and a railway happens to be close by that runs locomotives that are just giant mobile generators, the idea becomes much less audacious. The mayor contacted Canadian National and requested an engine be brought to a level crossing close to the town hall. Once there, it was met with a large crane that lifted it off the rails and onto the road. The locomotive was then driven the remaining thousand feet towards the nearest point they could plug it into the grid. And when I say driven, I mean literally. It was driven under its own power down the road with the wheels carving grooves into the tarmac. From there, it was hooked to the grid and set to produce roughly 375 kilowatts of power at 60 hertz, well below its maximum possible output. A second locomotive, number 3508, was brought in with plans to use it to power the local high school, but this meant moving it across an overpass. It was instead used as a backup generator when it was decided that the overpass wouldn't likely be able to take the weight of the engine. With the locomotive hooked up, it was able to power several municipal buildings and provide enough power to emergency services to organize the situation and operate. Eventually, the town got its power back and the diesels were put back onto the rails. They both had to be service to repair the damage sustained to the driving gears and other parts after they were literally driven on the road. As handy as they were, I doubt anything similar would happen again soon. One, because most places have upgraded their connection to their power grids, and two, because the engines cost roughly two million apiece, meaning the railway companies wouldn't likely want them going off the rails anytime soon. Still though, just shows that not all crazy sounding ideas are bad ideas. Subscribe for more.